Yo, what's poppin'? All right, we're gonna be talking about kind of playing solo in an MMO today, okay? This guy posted on the forums, and he said, I've got a question for solo players. As someone who's played MMOs for over 15 years of my life, the main draw to it for me and many others over the years in the community is the cooperative play, the silly and random interactions, meeting new people, etc. Everyone knows the quest, the grind, the loot. It's all pretty basic, but it's the replayability of the group content that really drives people to keep doing the same quests over and over and over again. This game has been heavily marketed to the solo player the last few years, and the game has definitely reflected that both with the content and the community. My main question is solo players. Why do you play solo in an MMO? Also, I want to genuinely ask if you think a live service single player game is the type of game you would enjoy in the future. Do you want cosmetics in a store in every game you play? I promise I don't work for EA or Blizzard. Okay, so let's think about this, okay? We've talked about this in other videos, a couple other videos actually, the foundation for kind of how the scene and the community for the MMO genre has really changed since the early 2000s. Back in the early 2000s, this is, this is one of many points, this is not the foundation here, but Think about where social media was back in the early 2000s. It was basically non-existent. So the way that you hung out with your friends or really engaged with a lot of people that you would never meet under normal circumstances, honestly, was through video games. And if you wanted to hang out with your friends, you know, you could go over and you could text them, you could go hang out, you could do whatever. But if you wanted to meet people in a different state, if you wanted to form cool relationships with different people, connect with different people and different cultures, all that stuff, video games and specifically MMOs were actually a great way to do that. They were a, a huge, huge social platform prior to things like Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and all that stuff. And so a lot of people really got excited about grouping up. And a lot of the content in these games also required you to group up. That was the big thing. You couldn't tackle a lot of the content in these early form MMOs, EverQuest, World of Warcraft, you know, back in the vanilla days, all of that stuff completely solo. There were some games that were great solo. Like you could do RuneScape solo pretty easily. But there was, and you could play a lot of World of Warcraft solo as well. But there was a lot more almost forcibly or forced group content and it felt good you know it was there was there was a lot of good times there was a lot of fun times in that sort of fashion but it was a lot more required back then and over time the mmo genre has not really tried to appeal to kids every single generation so the last time that i was a kid playing mmos you know that was that was all the rage man i mean you would have people playing like Halo and Call of Duty. You would have people on World of Warcraft and RuneScape growing up. You'd have people playing Madden and FIFA and, you know, all these other basketball games. And then, you know, chill, laid back games, some of the single player RPGs or things like Roller Coaster Tycoon or the Jurassic Park games, whatever. Y'all get, get the idea. There was a whole bunch of different games that everybody was playing, but MMOs were definitely one of the pillars of early gaming. And nowadays, that's not really the case. Nowadays, you really have a lot of battle royales. You don't have as many single player RPGs that are super popular with younger generations. Obviously, Elden Ring is a hit, but I feel like the average age of people that play that is not like it's not a bunch of middle school and high school kids for the most part. You get you get more things like Roblox and Minecraft and Fortnite and Call of Duty and, you know, stuff like that, Apex. And that's what seems to be popular for the kids nowadays. So then and what does this good. have to do with MMOs? You start thinking about, okay, well, the same people that were attracted to these MMOs early on in their childhood are likely still pretty attracted to them now. Like I've been playing MMOs. Everybody always says this. I've been playing MMOs for 15 years. I've been playing MMOs for 20 years. I've been playing since I was like a little kid back since... You know, the the very first MMO that I ever played was RuneScape. And then I moved on to WoW and all of that. Y'all know, know the drill. But all of us have grown up a lot. I mean, obviously, there was a lot of people that were in their 20s and 30s when that stuff was coming out. And I get that. But all of the kids is what I'm getting at. All the kids that grew up playing MMOs 
we're now adults. We now have jobs. People are starting families. People have families. You have a lot more responsibilities, which means you have a lot less time. And as a result, I don't have time to schedule out group activities and stuff every day after school like I used to, or I don't have time to schedule out group activities with like all my all my friends in high school and college and stuff on the weekends. It's just not it's it's not there anymore. We don't have that kind of time. I have work. We're moving into a new house. Like we'll start a new family in a couple of years. So a lot of the MMOs have started to reflect that. You know, World of Warcraft has so many solo elements. And if you look at their newest expansion that's coming out this fall or late summer, whatever you want to call it, one of their primary new features, two of them, is one is warbands. Warbands are basically a way to incentivize account wide progression and to experience the game like in your shoes, not necessarily on a per character basis, but it's saying, hey, we know you don't wanna to have to do this all over again. We wanna respect your time. We want you to be able to progress through this content on an account wide basis. And if you wanna hop on alts and play it a different way, basically, like you're welcome to, but you don't have to do all this content. You know, it's not in the way. They're also releasing Delves, which is obviously we're pretty familiar with Delves in the ESO community, but WoW's never had something like that, but it's basically a progressively harder and harder solo play experience. It's very different than what we have. It's very different. So like in ESO, it would be like, imagine if you could turn on veteran and then veteran hard mode for Delves, there were instance content and you could go higher and higher and higher and higher, better rewards, all that stuff, right? So you have all of this solo content that's been pouring out and it's because we don't have the time. You know, if you have little kids or something, you have a job, sometimes you just want to log on and play the game, but you want to feel like you're doing something. You want to feel like you're progressing something. And these developers are very smart and they understand that. They know that the MMOs are still really heavily catered towards adults. You know, it's not kids anymore. You know, you don't have all this time. So a lot of the content is making it an ESO so that you don't even have to really communicate with people. We have the group finder now, so you don't even have to reach out to a guild or reach out to another person in Craghorn in order to join a group for a trial. Same for Infinite Archive. You can get Infinite Archive started up solo, or you can just put a group posting up in the group finder and just say that you're looking for a tank or a DPS or something and just get to rocking. All of this stuff that used to be and it felt good. Basically very difficult for solos and really required or necessitated other people. You it's it's now streamlined for you, so you never have to really communicate. Right? So let's go ahead and read through some of these comments. This guy said, the only reason I started playing ESO was that it's an Elder Scrolls game and I enjoyed the lore. With no new story content since Skyrim in 2011, this seemed like a reasonable way to bridge the time until the next single player Elder Scrolls game. Yeah, so that's the other thing. Elder Scrolls Online specifically and is really catering heavily to two different groups of people, which is a little bit different than some of the other MMOs. We have people that are wanting to experience the Elder Scrolls universe lore, and they've played the crap out of Skyrim, which released literally 13 years ago. That's crazy to say. And even though they've added mods and all this stuff it's not like it's not canon right this, this is all community-based mods people are doing incredible work to improve the you know the experience of skyrim but overall there's nothing there's nothing that's come out since 2011. and so while they're waiting for the elder scrolls 6 this is the best way to fill the gap so that's one group and the second group is people that are either burnt out or just curious from other mmos and they're kind of window shopping, basically. It's maybe too competitive, too much vertical progression, too much busyness in World of Warcraft, New World. Um, they're tired of getting screwed by their developers, basically. You know, BDO, super grindy, Final Fantasy XIV, they love the style of the game and are looking for another single player based, more like online RPG, which is which ESO falls in the same category as, right? So you have these people all coming in and a lot of them are like hey you know we are here because of the elder scrolls games which are single player games we're going to play this the same way and it felt good. also i want to genuinely ask if you think a live service single player game is the type of game you would enjoy in the future do you want cosmetics in a store in every game you play this is kind of out of touch dude obviously 
I think and it this good. is such a silly question, in my opinion, and I don't mean to be rude about that, but I don't think there's a single person that enjoys having to pay for cosmetics. I think everybody has kind of come to an understanding in a lot of the live service games and MMOs nowadays, which are so freaking expensive, that there's lots of different payment models that you can use. You can use buy to play or free to play. You can use an in-game cosmetic store, buy to play, or I'm sorry, um, purchasable DLC or downloadable content and um, a subscription model, right? ESO employs basically everything all at once. A lot of times it's free to play, right? It has free to play weekends. You have to buy to play the base game. You have to buy to play the DLC or you can subscribe. And it's got probably the most extensive cash shop in any MMO I've played, Western MMO that I've played. So obviously I think a lot of us would rather have this stuff be earnable, but nothing that we say is going to even remotely matter in that regard, you know, and nothing that we, it, people that get mad at the devs and stuff in here, you know, about the monetization, I always think is kind of funny because Rich and Rich and Gina and Kevin have, <laughs> you know, nothing to do with that. All right. There won't be a single player, or I'm sorry, there won't be a single answer to this. Every soloist will have different reasons. I play ESO for the same reason I play any other game. Story, exploration, collecting stuff, achievements. I prefer soloing because I generally don't enjoy group content, which tends to just be combat. And once you learn the mechanics, boring. Of course, I forget what that stands for. A big no to needing or wanting a store in every game. Read reviews of single player games. Most players do not want to spend money to get cosmetics and such in a single player game. Single player games that have any type of store or microtransactions are usually crucified in reviews. Selling DLCs for them is okay. Selling mods is okay if they're worth the money. Read up about the horse armor mod in Oblivion. Yeah, and they just had this issue with Dragon's Dogma, which is a single player game, and they were selling a lot of stuff in the store. Um, which again, it's it's one of those things like it's kind of a necessary evil in MMOs and live service games because they have to pay the devs, they have to pay to keep the lights on, you know, they have to make money so that they can continue to develop good content in the future. But, you know, the extensiveness is, is kind of the, the degree of the monetization is usually where, where we get to. But anyways, the point is why play solo? It's because a lot of people don't have time or desire anymore to play with a lot of that group content. They want to experience what the game is really founded upon. And that's the single player Elder Scrolls series. Um, second thing, people have families. People have lives, people have jobs, and you don't have as much time anymore. Being that the crowd that MMOs really, really, you know, pertain to or attract are adults, not really kids anymore. And there's not really an MMO that's really tried outside of World of Warcraft to appeal to a younger group of players. They recently just did a Battle Royale-esque um, kind of game mode for their PvP. And it was extremely popular, but their implementation of it was not. So it blew up. Plunderstorm did really, really good. And I think it would have made them a lot of money should they have expanded upon it. But, you know, ESO's not really trying to do any of that stuff. World of Warcraft and ESO, even though they're in the same genre of games, they're also drastically different at the same time. They appeal to two vastly different types of people. They do vastly different things. You know, it's just solo play is is always going to be more and more popular over time. It's just how it is until they find a way to crack into that new market of teenagers and young kids. It's always going to be like this. You know, solo play is going to be more and more popular. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.